Greetings, and welcome to the Cell Portrait Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Dakota Brown. Let's take a trip into a sonic voyage of music, culture, human expression, and above all, the minds of our very unique guests that we share a space with. If you like what we do on this independently owned podcast, you can always show some love by supporting our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash self-portrait gospel podcast. Thanks to all of our listeners and enjoy the show. Where where are you located at? Because you're in Central. Where are you at? I'm in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm about an hour, hour or so outside. Cookville, Tennessee. I knew I know some people or I knew some people from Cookville, Tennessee. I know you do. We have a lot to talk about, man. I, I'm one of my best friends. Um, even though he's older than me, I, you know, essentially kind of grew up with him. Joey Allred and his brother Mikey Allred. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, man. There there are a lot of, you know, between Knoxville and Nashville is is Cookville. Um, it has been a weird um cerebral net and it, it, has, it has caught the, the craziest things you, you would never think that so and so played here in the 90s and that this happened of course you know in all these other surrounding areas that's that's what you get but around here yeah. the history is is crazy man the people that have passed through here our mutual friend james toth we've got yeah, yeah. to play here and <laughs> um of course you know kind of being uh, acquaintance with acquaintances with him now but we would kind of goof and just but yeah man cookville is this weird why do a, you think that is? you think it's a partially a geographical thing on what what it's on the way to or do you think i mean like i maybe there were it seemed like yeah maybe there was kind of a, a scene of open-minded people making cool music there for a while Maybe there still is. I mean, I don't. There are. Yeah. I mean, you know, Cookville, like a lot of other places, maybe you can attest to this too. And, you know, in your neck of the woods, things are, you know, changing for for all the different, you know, things being good and bad. But, you know, growing up here, um, by the time I became, you know, you know, 16, you know, 15, 16, a lot yeah. of these guys were still you know, playing and, you know, Joey was playing in his heavy psych outfit and they were, you know, kind of the local heroes, you know, they're like the one and only real band that was going on tour for three weeks and getting, you know, the shit kicked out of them and then coming back. Uh, I put on one of those, I put on that graceless record the other day. That's like, oh, that's, yes. that's silly, isn't it? That's, uh, silly, man. that's Joey and Matt. Yeah. Graceless is another one, man, where it's, you know, Matt's up in North Carolina. I've not talked to him in forever, but it's just, you know, things like that. And we would all kind of hang out at the one little coffee shop here and they'd come back through town and tell us their stories. And yeah, it just made us all really, really close. And we all like the same, you know, weird, esoteric, experimental stuff. And you know, then we bump into each other at like Walmart. It, it, it just, it was always natural and very yeah. personal. You know what I mean? Um, sure, it sounds really organic. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, but like you say, with the geographical, you know, location, you know, being up here in the mountains and yeah, it, it's attracted a lot of people, man. Of course, now there's, you know, there's muddy roots and there's some, a lot of Americana and traditional music things that I know that you, really appreciate with the old timey stuff and uh -huh. that, folk, that stuff is around here man i mean i don't know what muddy roots is is that like a festival or something it just happened this past weekend um it's 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 up here in cookville which is the craziest thing man i i really never knew about it and it's like a rock's throw but it's more like heavy um oh okay yeah i mean dude i saw sleep and high on fire and ohm in the same night and then i drove five minutes back to my house that i've grown up in forever it's 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 a fever uh -huh. yeah. it's like crazy man <laughs> um but yeah have you have you been in this area i mean I, i've seen you play in nashville a couple times um but have you been in the cookville area yeah years ago years ago. like uh i mean this would have been like early 2000s but i remember that's i i came through playing improv music at some point and met i think that's when i met 
uh, the all reds and yeah, it would have been like, God, yeah, that, I mean, that probably was like 2006 or seven or something. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's, that was a little, I, I think that might've been the last time I was there. I mean, it's, I don't, unless I've driven through it and just can't remember, but. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, the last time I saw you perform, unfortunately it's been this, this long ago, I drove up and saw you and Callahan perform at, um, third man record uh, blue room oh at third man wow cool. yeah i mean that like you know seeing you play and of course you know i'm sure you've been a fan of bill and all his stuff for years um it was it was crazy to see you perform man because you know joey and his brother and then witties which was another guy that that, that ran around here you mm. know got me into your music and got me into all these other bands that I know you appreciate. I mean, I remember where I was when I first heard, you know, Eagle Claw by Wooden One, and it changed my fucking life. And they're like, well, you need to listen to, you know, Nathan Bowles. And he's got like oh, stuff that he does too outside of his more traditional approach. And it was just like, and it's, it's just continued on ever since, man. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Yeah. I, uh, yeah i guess I, yeah i did a couple tours with opening for bill i think one i did solo and then another i did with the trio uh yeah yeah that that was fun i i, I remember the third man one pretty specifically just because that's such a weird space but um it is it is i saw you know mm -hmm. i saw you guys it was intimate i was stand or standing literally i mean you know six feet from your shoes like we were we were right yeah, it's like a, that's kind of a high stage right it's got this like yeah, it back wall or yeah and then just a couple of years after that i saw sleep there and that um, was fucking insanity <laughs> like, um but, but yeah, yeah that, that was a while ago i mean i guess that was that was probably 2019 2018 or something yeah and then of course seeing you guys i mean dude that was 2016 2017 I mean, it's been a minute i mean it's it's been a while but you bring up the trio which i want to jump jump back and forth from future past present but man oh yeah yeah whatever it's, our, it's our possible dude is such a wonderful record man and it's obviously it's safe to say at this point um that anything drag city is involved with is is the best i mean <laughs> those those guys obviously they're you know they're they're the greats and it's one of those labels you know that would have been you know your um like the, the the punk labels where you just you trust everything that's under that umbrella but yeah man yeah i think yeah i mean coming up i think the thing that i liked about stuff that was on drag city was that it was sort of dependably unique or like there what you know so it it could span sort of different a lot of different stylistic territory but it always at least coming up like in college and stuff like that was my sort of uh my impression of the label through just getting into different artists who were releasing stuff there or just like checking out drag city stuff. Cause I, I was pretty active in the college radio station at Virginia tech. So I'd be just like listening to rotation stuff that would come in, you know, there'd be a lot of drag city promo CDs and you just, yeah, you get a sense that there was a real wide ranging, like omnivorous uh, sense of taste Mm -hmm. behind the label that was really inclusive um i always dug that so and uh yeah i still i mean i still i still find that yeah their their curation is really um it's just it's so their own thing and kind of inspiring and how varied it is yeah man it's 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 incredible and you know it's I'm glad you dig the record. That's cool. Yeah, man. It's such an incredible record. Um, I loved it. And I was, you know, 
thrilled that they you know they 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 passed that along to me and 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 getting to listen to it this summer um it's 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 wonderful stuff man but mentioning the college radio station um i i never personally got to experience that unfortunately but so many people have and it's it's incredible but you know growing up in virginia did you have that 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 country kind of upbringing maybe even similar to kind of how it is out here in Tennessee like what was your environment like growing up and then kind of bridging that into some of the music that you're getting into because one of the many things that I find so fascinating about you is you play both parts so well and I I love that because you 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 pay your you know the the respects and maybe even the debts to the old time wow. music the music that really painted a picture of what you know obviously this country used to look like or even feel like and then there's the other side where it's almost like this crazy chaotic response to what it is now um i, I just always admired that contrast and there's so many people we can mention that really fit that that shoe but yeah man how did you How, how did all this kind of start for you? Wow, it's a lot to talk. I'll, I want to come back to that like both parts thing because I'm like, Dude, curious bust about it up, that. break it up. This is it's granola, man. Okay. <laughs> for you, <laughs> okay. well, the initial part of the question was about like environment, like the environment I grew up in. You mean like the physical yeah. environment or like the musical environment? Like what kind of music well, was I hearing? Well, or? just both because you know, like you like you know, out here, you know, it's pretty rural. Yeah. It's not. A huge city and but people are getting into really cool amazing things and i'm just curious kind of how that started off for you if it was kind of the same or completely different oh uh i mean when i was where i grew up in like the tidewater area of virginia was pretty it was at the time pretty rural um uh oh, my cat wants to come in from the porch hold on i'll be right back <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I it was pretty rural, and my exposure to music was like <clears throat> taking piano lessons and uh, whatever was on the radio in the car when my parents drove, and then like watching MTV when I became like a preteen, and then going to the mall and going to the you know the CD store and like getting CDs of shit I heard on MTV, and then. I mean, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't have a sense of either really traditional music in any sense, in any genre or like ideas of folk traditions beyond that stuff, nor did I really have a sense of like <clears throat> improvised music or I don't know, whatever we want to put under the umbrella of like psych kind of music. Mm hmm until getting to college and getting involved at the radio station i mean my i love music as a kid um but it was through pretty like mainstream uh channels and i mean i was i started playing drums with friends and like shitty garage bands in high school and stuff and that was really fun but i didn't really get into yeah i didn't get into uh start digging deeper into folk forms whether that be like trad music or like the what i consider folk traditions around improvising right, right. so meeting some friends meet, meeting some people early enough in college that were also kind of hungry for that kind of knowledge and through the radio station and playing and playing in like a sort of psych garage kind of band playing drums in that and then uh meeting um Mike Gangloff and Michael Dimmick and uh and then sort of have you know them introducing me to a lot of stuff that I was just getting like sniffs of at that point when I was like you know I mean how old was I at that point like 19 or something right right yeah it's 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 interesting uh, maybe you had a similar you know obviously with 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 MTV and things like that but something that I've kind of come to understand especially for people um because i might be just a little um a little bit younger than you but 
people of our our generation and just kind of the the surrounding generation um obviously including Joey and his brother skateboarding was a huge yeah. uh, bridge and i at first i kind of thought it was just maybe this nostalgic kind of coincidence but it's not i've talked to so many people people that you know and people that you that you've played with and admire and they all have like this yeah maybe i wasn't jumping down stairs and jumping off ramps but I had a skateboard. I was riding a skateboard. Therefore, this other side of that culture, especially if you like grow up in the sticks and you're not near a, an ocean or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You, you say know what that. I mean? Like, it's yeah, in the, no. the videos. It's it's in. Yeah, like I got to wear a skate. I definitely like. Yeah, I had a skateboard and skated badly in high school, and then it's interesting. I wish Rex from the trio was here on the call because he. Um, I think has some story like that kind of culture helping yeah. to give him a, you know, the foundation to work on as well. Also, Michael Dimmick from from Pelt and Spiral Joy Band is like a skate guy. And he, <laughs> That's I, awesome. remember, I remember him turning me on to specific skate videos. Um, and yeah, that's a good point. Like the music curation and some of that stuff if you're a kid and, and hit that at the right time although i didn't really have access to that stuff in i am a little older i mean i'm 40 so like i mean I'll like i'll be 30 at the end at the end of december okay. yeah so like but there wasn't act basically like access to stuff as we think of access now i didn't really have until Inter like internet file sharing was kind of popping off right when I got to college. So like, and even then there wasn't any streaming. You were just like downloading a bunch of stuff. So there was definitely the first couple of years of college when I was like downloading like all the like film stuff that I couldn't see otherwise. And, you know, like rip weird needle drops of records that hadn't been reissued yet and stuff. Right, uh, right. But yeah, no, I didn't really have that. I I can't think of much yeah they're just like i just didn't have a lot of i i mean there was like very early internet stuff that i would be doing in high school but i don't remember really like find i can't remember i mean you're just like downloading like bad mp3s of like the same classic rock radio stuff yes yeah. like, there wasn't any like digging there wasn't any there i i wasn't like connected to like a network of like a finding cool music or whatever but i just remember yeah like so like the whatever the most like alt sounding thing on like mtv or mtv2 i'd be like oh shit yeah <laughs> well it's it, it's crazy you know with, with, with the skateboarding because you know like you said you you were kind it was kind of at your fingertips but not really and of course during that time no dvds so it would have been tape exchange or vhs exchange when they were yeah. still you know still in circulation now those things are worth, you know, a pretty penny, but it's like, you know, maybe at a video store or a friend of a friend's older brother, but, you know, you, you get a hold of like, you know, like a toy machine or like blind and it's like, what yeah. is this crazy shit? And then come to find out it's Sonic Youth or it's, you know. Yeah, I remember seeing a kid with a Sonic Youth t-shirt on the bus in high school and thinking it was like, I, it was just a, it was a t-shirt for washing machine. Yes. Super simple. It's just like the wash, like simple logo, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember thinking, like, without ever having heard the band, I was like, "That looks so fucking cool." Yes. And I saw, I did actually, I did see Sonic Youth in high school, but they, it was they oh. opened for Pearl Jam. Like this would have been like two thousand, like early two thousand. So I remember seeing them. They were playing like the ghosts and flowers material wow dude that is that is a, they are still I think I'm a bunch at this point but yeah i mean like so good such a good I, lot. dude see specifically washing machine that is just that really for me paints the picture of of like youth seeing someone wearing a band such as sonic youth on the school bus you you see it and you, and you see this you know this yeah. pop culture this symbol whatever it is and you, and you know it's cool i that that's incredible man because 
I don't know, that just paints this really romantic, like, I don't know, I was thinking like suburbia or like, you Yeah, know, like, no, it's total, like, it was the total, um, yeah, where I grew up was this weird, like, rural suburbia thing, where, like, you, you, it, there, were, it was, there would be these vast spaces of, like, small bridges over these kind of low-lying, like, watery landscapes, and then there would just be this little suburb where all these houses were collected, and the bus would just kind of bounce between those. And then take you to this high school that was just in the middle of a huge field, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it and sounds like you were like living in this like stand by me Stephen King meets Goonies like beautiful it didn't feel romantic at the time. I mean, my memories of it were just like I just kind of wanted to get out of there, but right yeah but I guess that fuels that 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 feeling like fuels um. I mean, I have a complicated sense of it. I I love the landscape around there. Like, I really love, and I have, like, some really positive memories of childhood in my little friend group when I was here. But it's like, yeah, it's kind of, I have an ambivalence about, I never go back. My, I don't really have any, well, I have family kind of close to there, but not exactly in that zone. So I, ra I rarely, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't go back, but. But yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, the, seeing the seeing the Sonic Youth shirt and sort of knowing that I don't know, like just something about the I think the aesthetic design of it versus like I mean I have another memory of seeing a kid in like a huge oversized like Primus t shirt and. Kind of like knowing at that point, like, that's just like not my bag. Like, I don't know what that music sounds like, but like aesthetically, that's not, I don't rock with that, you know? Have a sense. Yeah, I I respect that, man. That's <laughs> well, it's you know, growing up in that in that sort of environment. I I grew up in a you know in a very rural, very country you know setting too, and I imagine it was just like just like you said, man. You you start kind of you know moving away for college, and and you you start getting into certain books and movies and and music and just certain you know you know. you know, politics and like ways of thinking. And, and it really just, and, and maybe you can relate to this too, man. It, it really does kind of clash to say the least with like how you were raised and not that you were raised in a, in, in a terrible way or raised in, you know, this way that's like, you just have to like reverse engineer and unlearn it. But, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating, like the psychology of it. Cause you, and as you know, I mean, you've, you've met so many people from around the world and of, 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 and just played with so many incredible people. So you get to see, you know, people that born and raised in like Los Angeles or, or in these really big concentrated areas and nothing to them or anything like that. But it's, you know, being around like that, that, that stimulation of, of culture and, Like, yeah, down the street, this happened. And it's like, holy shit. You know, I've been reading about that since I was like, you know, 15 on like my back porch under like a, a bug light. And then you, these people are like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, did you, you know, ha wanting to break out of that cage, um, when did you start to really develop your, just your your motivation your drive and your and your and your just honest like an honesty your taste to want to play music and perform live was this during your college time or is this kind of after college It was, no, it wasn't. I mean, like, I loved when I was playing drums with my friends. We, yeah, we loved, we loved just getting, we played in this like tiny room in one of the guys uh, in his basement. And we would just get in there and it was so cramped. And we would just crank so loud. And we just loved the experience of that. But we also loved doing that. out i mean the, the, at the time blacksburg like right when i moved there was sort of this tail end of this pretty rich period of blacksburg like sort of diy shows and it, it it had some ups and downs because of various things but it 
you know, I, I got to college and like saw a bunch of house shows and got really inspired by that. And I love, I liked, I was really getting into like when I was discovering uh, music on records that kind of like opened up dr drum possibilities for me beyond mm. um, playing, you know, songs like I got, I mean, I was pretty into like trying to develop technique and um, so before I even started playing band, I mean, I, well, I didn't start playing banjo to like 2006 or something like that. So maybe even later. So uh, maybe 2008, I can't remember now. No, probably like 2006. But uh, yeah, before then, I was just like, I loved playing drums. I loved uh, improvising on different things, uh, playing with friends. I mean, I guess, yeah, my, whatever we call my taste or was starting to develop and would continue to like evolve until, I mean, it continues to evolve now. I don't know. I mean, yeah. but yeah, that it wasn't really it basically, yeah, again, started in those first couple of years of college. So like very early 2000s and then um, meeting again, like meeting Mike and Michael and starting to improvise with them and then starting to play traditional old time stuff with Mike and kind of, I mean, I think Mike and I jived initially so well because we both basically saw, we both saw the same sort of common thread, I think in a lot of the music we liked, which was not just like attitude and, I don't mean attitude, like <laughs> attitude, but like an, yeah. an attitude or <laughs> an approach. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, the the commonality of like uh, drone elements and and the the tension and relationship between composition and improvisation and how a song can be stretched and basically all this stuff. We liked a lot of the same stuff, and then because he was. So much older we he was able to introduce me to so much stuff where i was like oh yeah this is like of course like right up my alley and it was, so it really felt i think we just yeah we we just hit it off really quickly despite our age difference and then uh i think yeah it was that the idea that like the things i like about traditional music and the things i like about uh music from the tradition of like diy noisier improvised music and everything in between is essentially like sharing a lot of the same elements right right so like just on like a musical level and, and but but also on a community level on like how material evolves in a community like material yeah. evolves in a community as much through like the oral tradition and for, you know, sharing songs in like traditional cultures or traditional music, but it also, that also works in the way like people listen to records and like go see shows and get inspired by a show and try to make a record that, you know, is inspired by this other record they listen to and you find yourself in part of a scene or whatever, like all that shit to me is like the same thing. Right. So it's like, I think I think Mike and Michael and like the Pelt and Joy Band guys, when I met them, it was like, yeah, this is kind of how we all see music. Right. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for them, but like it, it how it's that's how it strikes me anyway. Yeah. So like um Well, it, it makes sense that you guys, you know, come together. It was it was very similar, you know, going back to, to Joey, which he's you know, I can go back. I can usually tie something to him pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty effortlessly. But like, you know, listening to, you know, Sun City Girls and uh, Jackie O Motherfucker and Henry Flynn and just, you know, uh, Derek Bailey and just anything that makes you feel just slightly separated from 
everything, you know, um, it, it just engulfs your senses and obviously jazz, you know, free jazz any any of that stuff is just already, you know, obviously, you know, there, but like you said, you just kind of want to hurry up and get out there and, and, and just get it out of your system and like play it. It's almost like this, it's like this fever that Yeah. you're Uh -huh. I Yeah. got I think, a I fever. think there's like, I think there is. Yeah. I think that one of the maybe crucial early steps in like developing a voice and taste and stuff is like, part of it is you want, you hear this stuff and it almost gives you permission. Right. Yeah. Uh, it gives you permission to make sound <laughs> because, because you, you've kind of gotten, you've gotten the boundary, the boundaries, got wider so you're like okay well now it seems like there's precedent and it feels almost like permission and then then you kind of work on just getting better because the shit because the shit you're listening to is so good that you sort of or at least this is how i approach it is i just felt like well i just want to find find the voice that honors what i'm kind of want to do that is neither like no technique bonehead shit, but also not like chop shop bullshit. Cause you kind of like, you know, you don't, I think I, I think I understood early on that, that sort of there's like limitations in both those approaches, but you kind of, but you kind of, but I, but I ultimately tend to err on the side of like, playfulness and ignorance i think i mean but but at the same time you don't want to you don't want to um you want to have the tools available at your disposal to do the shit you want to do Right, and right. you, know, you can't kind of like can't kind of fake it but for so long but i think when you start out you want permission to just fuck around you know Well, it's almost like you're kind of conjuring a spirit. It's like you don't want it to like hurt everybody in the room, but you know what you're kind of getting into. It's like you don't want anything or you to kind of overstay your welcome. It's just kind of we're going to open this bottle and... there's going to come a time where we're going to shut it. We're going to put the cork back. And that's just kind of, <laughs> that's just, kind of, you know, um, that game. But I first heard, I want to say pole and cloven, but there was an interview that um, his name is escaping me. Unfortunately, Derek field Feldman Is that Okay. well? it's the southern it was this video feature it was you and james just shooting the shit about grateful dead which i know toth is a massive massive Oh, that video. Oh, God, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was yeah, a long yeah. time ago but dude this is me you know 20 years old 19 20 21 years old watching you guys you know shoot the shit and i'm just waiting for new music to come out but with you guys you were so prolific and so on your shit and motivated and inspired That was like 2014 or something. a while back man that was a while back and then um getting into paradise of bachelors which becomes another label where you're just like whatever it doesn't matter what you put out um but yeah hole and cloven was really what opened my mind to to your world and the things that you were that you were bringing for and then i then get to go back in time with you know black
other players. It was like, yeah, just that one. I mean, it was a conscious effort on that one for it to be just me. Like, I, it, yeah. it was an accident. But I think that's like a, it's kind of a cool one to start with. It's a beaut- it's it's a beautiful record, man. And I, the the years leading up to around that time, I was just, and I still am, but during that time, you know, 2013, 2014, I was so obsessed with a lot of Middle Eastern music and listening to the, the you know, the oud and listen to all these crazy ancient stringed instruments. And then any band, whether it's, you know, an American band or European bands, you know, what have you kind of interpreting, you know, that, 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 that league of sound. And then I kind of find you and you've got the banjo. And to be honest, I don't think I really heard anybody kind of approach the banjo that way because, you know, growing up around here, I mean, shit, you'd step on one on the way to the store, but I didn't, I had no kind of knowledge or you know, wear it all or whatever that you can kind of approach this instrument, you know, whether it's fretless or not in this very metaphysical, very um, open kind of spiritual way. And yeah, man, you, cause of course, you know, listening and, and worshiping, you know, Ben Chasney and, 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 and Jack Rose and all of our greats, you know, uh, of, 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 of now and later it's, it was really kind of an introduction to that instrument in that way, man. It really blew my mind when I first heard that record, man. It's a stellar fucking album, man. And I've been a fan ever since, man, you know, leading up to that, it's just, you know, watching you grow through, you know, plainly mistaken and, you know, the stuff you've done with Bill McKay and it's, it's just great, man. I, of course, you know, don't want to just, hit you with all the you know all this stuff and make you uncomfortable but yeah man that it's just it's it's you're a phenomenal yeah. fucking musician man it's it's incredible um it's yeah nice. i mean i'm glad it yeah i mean ultimately i'm just glad it connected yeah in terms of like what a banjo can or can't do it's interesting because like yeah there's nothing the tool i mean yeah like the tools on Hole and cloven for instance they're just like basic mm-hmm. my banjo is not like drastically unlike other five string open back banjos out there beyond the fact that it's like an exceptionally well made one right but it's not like it's not like modified i mean there's no it's all all the i mean i think that's what draws me to the instrument maybe too is like that's all in there. Like it's just me. If it sound, yeah. Like the sounds that I get out of it that reach beyond sort of the sounds we think of as like traditional American music. It's because like, I don't know. It's like a very old, the genetics of that instrument are very old and they're like, they come from different, they like, they're found in all these different parts of the world. So it's like when you, well, yeah. So when you listen to different folk stuff from around the world too, you get inspired by that. And then you just try and like honor what you learn from that in your own voice without sounding like uh, horny. Right. <laughs> I don't know the way to say. I mean, like you don't oh, want to. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be. You get so easy to play some corn. It is so 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 fucking easy to play like some corny ass bullshit on yeah. the banjo, like world like capital W M world music on the banjo. That's yeah. not hard to find that kind of stuff. And like, um, but I'm glad that I don't know. <laughs> it's cool to hear that. Yeah, that that record was maybe one of the one early ones for you to let you know, like, oh yeah, banjo like gives you the sense that banjo can do that that kind of stuff i mean that's what excites me about banjo too because i don't for as much as i play banjo i don't really consider myself like a banjo uh like a banjoist or huh. a banjo. yeah it's just the instrument it's like the instrument that has strings on it that i like that i when i want to do stuff that drums can't do that's like what i want to play 
Yeah. And dude, you, you play the banjo like you play the drums, man. I mean, and what's really crazy, I, I play guitar and I've picked up the banjo every once in a while, you know, um, whether it was Joey's, I think he at one point had brought one down off the mountain. It was a, it was a great, great grandparents. And I mean, this thing was prehistoric. It looked like it like grew, you know, like a, like it came off of a tree like it like it was the fruit of a tree i mean this thing was the real deal and we would sit around and we'd pass it around and and, and kind of play this thing we were just like man we're gonna provoke some weird like appalachian great grandparents you know the coal mine spirits or something but to me the banjo it was always so um such a vulnerable instrument like You know, and, and, and people like we that we've been mentioning, I've been listening to a lot of, you know, Sandy Bull and just you, you hear these people, um, you know, and, and, and Daniel Bachman and it's it, it's vulnerable. You're just it's just you. But with the guitar, I'm like, it's it's big. The, the guitar kind of is a band, at least in my opinion. But with the banjo, like, you know, your performance, for example, and, and, and um, just thinking back to the, you know, the, you know, the Blue Room. There is this weird, like ricocheted kind of vulnerability with a banjo. I don't know, like it doesn't allow you as much, you know, room for error or or, or like, you know, that that pivoting that you can kind of get away with. Uh, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe I'm talking out my. I don't know. Like, do you? Do no, you? Think there's like a yeah. I think I know what you mean. I mean, I think it's maybe because it is. bouncing off that percussion element i feel like it just i just feel like it goes different than like just a guitar you know what i mean Yeah, well, I can't, I can't play it. I didn't come to banjo from guitar too. So like, I don't, it, it's not even like the way I put, it's not like the way I play it is like, well, I wanted to do this on guitar, but I, but it sound, but I want it, but it doesn't sound right on guitar. So I'll do it on the banjo. Right. It, I'm not coming from it. Like if you handed me a guitar that was in standard tuning, I couldn't play you a single chord, like not a single one. I couldn't do a single chord shape if you handed me a guitar right now. I mean, if I, I could open tune it and like bake my way around playing something, but it doesn't. Uh, I think maybe because I'm not applying previous guitar knowledge to it, I don't feel like it's... Um, it doesn't feel like a more fragile version of the guitar to me. Like it just feels like a drum with strings on it. So Wow. like, and I, it's my first, it's my first and only like fretting instrument. I mean, I grew up playing piano, so I have some, like, I had some like digital finger, you know, like independent, like I, I had like good dexterity in my fingers, but I didn't, I just had to learn how to, I mean, I still find it kind of confusing, like fretting stuff, even in open tuning, but like my right hand feels the most kind of uh, natural because it just feels like the claw hammer, especially just feels like an extension of Hmm. percussion or whatever. But yeah, I, I think I know what you mean about, I mean, it does, I mean, yeah, it's a different instrument, Yeah, that's just my yeah. but it, it, um, I don't know, man. Guitar, I mean, acoustic guitar, it's just uh, so much like weight you have to deal with, with not in, I mean, that in like a bunch of ways. You, you can't, it's, I mean, and in, I guess in a sense, banjo has even more I, I like cultural sort of expectation or, or whatever. I, I didn't really, I, but I didn't come to banjo with that much like, I knew basically what the kind of banjo playing that I liked. or that I was drawn to, which tended to be like open back banjo, claw hammer, old time stuff. Like that stuff was the most cyclical and the most droney and the timbre of it sounded better than like closed back bluegrass resonator banjo to me. Uh, and still does. I mean, I like, I like some bluegrass stuff, but I'm pretty picky about it. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty picky about old time stuff too. So, I don't <laughs> but, but I mean, I don't, um, I'm not like interested really in like reclaiming banjo for some alternate tradition or mm -hmm. it, but 
it's not that I'm playing it because I think it's like a more like um quaint or like uh I don't know, quirky version, <laughs> version right. of guitar. It's like I'm gonna be so because I'm not coming to it from like as like a guitar alternate. Right. I get, I get to kind of see it. Well, I don't get to, I just do. I just like I I just approach it in a more both, yeah, percussive way, just because that's how my brain works, but also because I just don't have guitar baggage. And I mean, that's not I'm not claiming that I don't I'm not obviously inspired by um guitar music <laughs> of course i am like so you know especially i feel like early on me trying to find my banjo voice is like heavily influenced by fingerstyle guitar playing i mean you can hear that very yeah. obviously man that that's got to be the next title for a song for a record guitar baggage i love that that <laughs> is <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I like you said the, the the cultural vulnerability. I think that if I had to kind of wrap it up in a in a neat bow with the whole maybe feeling like you're kind of, you know, out there in the open with specifically the banjo, I think you kind of articulated that best with saying that because there is like that cultural kind of expectation. Of course with the guitar, it's like most likely you're gonna get a song, you know, you're gonna get you know, you're going to get the chords, you're going to get the vocals, but with that banjo, it's just like, all right, everybody be really, really quiet. You know, this person's gonna, you know, just <laughs> rip out of here like a, you know, like a, you know, drag race car or something like it's, especially around here, you know, it's like, you know, you got your guys, you know, playing on the porch or playing on the local square, whatever, whatever it may be. And you just kind of walk up on it and it's like jazz. It's, ending and it's beginning all at once and it's a peculiar instrument man and yeah i yeah it's 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 a very peculiar instrument the more i think about it <laughs> um but man i have to jump to um setting i oh yeah 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 hey, you, man. You of course, about that. yeah 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 yes of course new record comes out friday um Dude, at Eulogy blew my mind. So far, my one of my favorite records that I've that I've listened to, new records I've listened to um this summer coming into fall. I mean, I wasn't as familiar with I remember um last year um the uh Black Mountain College one coming out and I listened to it and and loved it. But I think the way that at eulogy hit me with the summer and just things being a lot different for better than, you know, last year for a couple of different reasons, it just, uh -huh. it's so fucking good, man. And any uh -huh. chance to hear you, you know, explore on, you know, tapes and your, your, your natural, you know, home roots and percussion and, and, and then bringing the keys it's for you outside of, you know, um, uh the other guys um mm. it's like full circle man you 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 start you know with keyboard banjo drums and then you know experimenting with tape it's it's just it's such a fucking cool record man i loved it thank you thank you i really i really love that one too i was just it the stars aligned on like it was a performance we were happy with and then it also happened to be recorded really well mm hmm so happened to be coming kind of at the tail end of a bunch of dates where we were like working on these ideas night after night so it, and then it yeah it was just a lot of yeah a lot of times you hit like one of those things but it's not recorded or like it was right. a really good recording of a good show but it was like right at the beginning of a tour and everything sounds kind of tentative or whatever but it just uh yeah i'm really glad we had that document and it was fun to sit down and we and uh mix it and kind of like listen back to it afterwards because it, it just it had pretty good like instrument isolation with the way it was mic'd so we could really like listen to things and be like oh yeah okay how can we help this pop here 
help the stereo field in this way. So it was fun to like get in the lab with a live recording in that way. Yeah. And setting is kind of, I guess it makes sense because when setting started before we were even calling ourselves that we were, it was really a performance thing, but just to ourselves, like when we would get together, we, we were essentially like performing just, just doing shows to no one was right. kind of how it worked. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we thought of it like, we were like that's why, what we were doing. We were, they, they didn't feel like rehearsals. Like we were getting together to play and it was essentially, I mean, it was kind of how like, how back in the day Spiral Joy Band or help rehearsals works. You were essentially just playing. You're just like playing a show, You're but to yourselves. <laughs> right. Well, that's the whole thing, especially with a lot of the music that we're talking about, man. At least I feel it's like you would be doing it anyway, you know, and then you kind of emphasizing on like a show or a tour and especially, you know, putting out a record and all the work that goes into these elements, especially now. I mean, Jesus Christ it's um you would be doing it anyway and that's kind of like the whole one of the many mantras of you know just speaking to a lot of the music and the musicians and bands we've been you know talking about and shining a light on is like kind of checking in with yourself and it's like well we would be playing this anyway so let's you know let's let's bring yeah, sort of yeah people. i mean that is true to an extent i think yeah. great band it also but you play differently in front of people Mm -hmm. so you kind of once i think once setting once we made the record which is like a totally different approach because there we were like we wanted to make these we wanted to like record these kind of discrete ideas and then kind of edit them down so that's you know and then once we decided we want to play more we wanted to play live shows after that in front of people the the shape of what we did i think changed a little bit mm. it like got more propulsive i mean yeah. it's like fairly propulsive at times on the record but especially when we started just playing for ourselves there was a lot of silence it was like a very it was kind of a fragile music um but well, it's cool I, mean, I think playing in front of people has gotten gotten into this more kind of like yeah propulsive octopus kind of yeah. <laughs> that I think we all yeah. like, I mean we all yeah we're we're stoked on where that on where that's going it's cool it's like it's such a different thing than the tree at the bowls trio because that stuff is like these discrete pieces that are fairly composed and like mm. um really about very specific interlocking cyclical pieces of the engine and it's like it was built pretty carefully um not to say setting isn't carefully considered but it's like it, they're so it's fun it's really uh for as much as life is really difficult right now it's like the the two being in those having those two projects be the kind of like active ones right now is satisfying because they speak to different parts of my practice. Well, yeah, you've got, you know, you've got the trio in one ear and setting in the other, you know, not that it's like a good and evil, but just like the, the contrast, you know, kind of helps yeah. the, you know, the middleman kind of, <laughs> you know, not drive the car off the road, but <laughs> it's 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 just it's it's littered with amazing textures man i listen to it over and over and over and it's that's something that i i love just in the in the grand scope of of it all and i and i wouldn't just consider setting just an experimental but i don't consider anything just one thing you know i'm sure you you understand that as well but i what i like about these certain um environments or whatever ecosystems of music I, I love like textures i love yeah. certain moments whether it was live or you know in studio or arguably you know always live <laughs> um that to me just really um it just provokes me in like the most like um 
I don't, I don't know. It's, it's something that, you know, when you go and listen to like certain areas of somebody's career, whether it's like Miles Davis or, or um, Eric Dolphy or whoever, you go to specific albums because you're like, you want that specific hit. You want that specific, um, that specific touch, that specific feeling, but it's, it's very um, personal because you know exactly where that's at. It's like your favorite shirt, you know, exactly where it's at <laughs> with this record. I just, I, I just got a lot of that, man. I, I felt a lot of um, inspiration to, to kind of live in, in that world. It just, it just reminded me of a lot of things that I, just fucking love about music man like it's it's raw it's terrifying there are so many parts <laughs> terrifying <laughs> well just the it for for me like it you know when you listen to music especially you know instrumental music you know obviously music without words it just it just creates this narrative where it's just like you know oh. if you're like you know you're, you're you're working to it you know like there I, I i was doing a lot of work while i was listening to this record the first couple times before you know putting together a review for it and mm. i was just like holy shit i'm all over the place like i am in like this this theatrical setting i'm in this like <laughs> it, it just it really hit all the different yeah it does, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because the we are sets at that point were generally around an hour and that was that was at the uh, it was for this uh, bringing it back to skating the show it was for okay. a skate park benefit. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so it was a skate park benefit. And um the bill was really good. Um Circuit Does You played and, <clears throat> and Dave like did a solo A B tear set and it was it was great. And they were like, All right, so for setting set an hour, like can you do like 45 minutes so we can keep things moving? And we we're like, Oh man, 45 minutes. I wonder if we can do that. We're <laughs> we were we were like yeah, I think we can do that. Of course we can do that. But then I remember before we went on, we were kind of checking in with each other like, all right, well, because we had gotten this thing where we had, we we could kind of play and not really look at the clock. And when we stopped, it was like within a couple minutes of an hour. Um, oh. We kind of gotten it, gotten, we had basically played this run of shows where we, we, had the we had these parts that we essentially would hit in roughly the same order sometimes they'd be then that and by parts i just mean like kind of like textures like right right part where the texture becomes like joe's playing that joe's on this instrument jamie's on this instrument nathan's on this instrument that's that texture then we'll move to this texture which is like another thing so we kind of had that idea and we had worked that we had worked that sequence and it was always like about an hour. So we're like, Oh shit. I wonder if this is going to fuck with the program. If <laughs> we try to consciously do it in 45 minutes, but it ended up working out. I remember even right at when we got off stage, we're like, Hey, we, we did it in 45 minutes and it didn't feel rushed, but, yeah. it, but, it, does, but it does like go through a lot of material. It like it, it doesn't stay static, but for so long. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, it's just traveling through all these different, you know, sort of animal kingdoms. It's that is so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. That's hilarious that it was for a skate park benefit. That is so full circle. That like of course that's what <laughs> beginning yeah. and um leading up to this, that's the, the such a weird cosmic coincidence um <laughs> so i was checking out um obviously you guys you guys are about to kick off tour you know kind of in and around halloween um oh yeah the setting trip yeah there's yeah there's, before there'll be like three i haven't announced them yet because they just got confirmed there's going to be three trio dates in october like dc new york philly um but then that's just three days just a short little thing we can do on the weekend and then yeah the setting thing starts like late october and that's like nine days or however long it is seven eight that's cool and you guys are doing the sleepy fest too um oh yeah yeah exciting man um obviously i i do not want to spend too much time on this because it is 
and it's not because it's like, oh, we need to move past it or any kind of aggression towards that, but just, you know, obviously relating COVID to, you know, your, your line of work and the things that you do. Um, yeah. I do want to, you know, give you that, 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 that time and that space to, you know, express like, you know, the difficulties of it, man. Cause a lot of, uh, and the reason I kind of phrase it that way is because, you know, talking to, uh -huh. a, you know, having guests on the podcast, a lot of them are just like, and, and not that they're like, I don't want to talk about that. And like, in, in kind of a, in a mean way or whatever, but a lot of them are just like, man, I don't even want to go back there. <laughs> I am right here. And then a lot of people are like, they do talk about it and it is almost very therapeutic, but um, have you been able to kind of shake those, those blues away and kind of move forward? Or do you kind of see, you know, unfortunately those impacts both as a professional musician, as obviously as a person and just kind of coexisting in this, you know, this, I don't know what to call it. It's, it's, it's really, really strange, but I mean, you know it very well because it's, <laughs> it well, is. Yeah. I mean, the, the material conditions in which artists and like art workers exist right now in this country is, is like dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Like, yeah. for reasons beyond COVID, although, you know, um, that could be a whole like two hour discussion in and of itself, but like, <laughs> we'll yeah, do it I, I, I mean, I don't feel like, a, I mean, I don't know if I would say I've like moved past COVID still feels like a daily, like a part of my life every day. I mean, I, I like, I'm like masked up at my day job working around, you know, vulnerable people every day. There's like a COVID wave recently going probably still kind of moving through Durham right now. Um, it affects, yeah, the way I think about big gatherings and and it affects, yeah, like details of touring and booking stuff, of course. I mean, I, uh, no, I don't, I don't feel like I've like moved past COVID at all. I mean, I feel like, well, I don't even know what that means. I mean, I feel like, uh covid is like a communicable disease is just like a reality that we that we live in and that i try to navigate as responsibly and thoughtfully as i can so it's like i don't and that obviously affects some stuff around playing music publicly um i mean i think the bigger almost i mean that is of course intertwined with like um economic inequalities and and the ways in which income streams for musicians have been like totally gutted and i i mean i they're definitely intertwined um but i i mean i do uh, i don't really know what else to say about it beyond like yeah the the realities of I mean, it's interesting, like you, I always think of this when you said it, you said it earlier in the context of the, <clears throat> of setting, like playing for ourselves and being like, yeah, we'd be doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And it like, it remind. <laughs> I know you didn't mean it this way, but it reminded me of like that, that sometimes there's this like refrain of like, well, musicians and people who love to play music like they'll do it like they'll do it anyway and so they kind of right. they they're able to uh buoy themselves on the you know the waters of their own um self-satisfaction and engaging with their art as if that's like uh somehow disconnected from the material realities of paying your bills you know and I, i'm like of an age where I think I'm old. I'm just old enough to have like the shift in how doable it is to pay some part of my bills with my art. Yes. 
I've seen that change so drastically since even not even since I started playing music, but since I started making records. Um, it's so drastic as to be uh, almost impossible to talk about. Like, like because it, it's I don't know. I mean, it's the the water I swim in all the time, so I don't. I don't know, but yeah, so, yeah uh, it's just tough out there. Just yeah, man, I, I fucking understand. And it's, and of course, you know, the whole, you know, moving past COVID, I mean, it's, you know, and that's not to say that people are like, yeah, it, does, it didn't matter. Or like, oh, that sucked. Okay, anyway, what, what, what we're we talking about? But it's like, it is kind of that way for a lot of people, you know, und you know, that's something that's pretty obvious. But just seeing it in music, it's just like, I see it in the ways that it's kind of slowed down certain, you know, parts, whether that's, you know, big fancy bands or just, you know, whatever caliber. And it's just kind of wigged me out a little bit because I'm like, you know, as you, it, it, it changed my life forever. And I struggled with, you know, not knowing if the people around me, it changed their life enough. It, it's uh, this whole psychological you know, war zone of. Well, yeah, I mean that's a whole thing. Yeah, that's like. Yeah, but just but kind of narrowing it down, bottlenecking it into music, and just being like, "Oh my god, this has never happened in terms of like going and seeing a band before. Like nothing like this has ever <laughs> challenged this, as far as we know, or at least this, you know, the people that are currently living on Earth. But like, yeah, it just, it just changed my whole like everything, like what it means to go and see a show like um being able to you know buy records and knowing that it go it's 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 really just kind of changed everything and of course i started doing the podcast during the height of the pandemic in 2020 and not because it was a pandemic it was just it just kind of happened you know it's like a just a, a relationship that you know that you know it's like oh now we're married you know it's it just kind of happened and then talking to the musicians that are just stopped dead in their tracks and then talking to others that it's just like this weird kind of visceral teeter totter or whatever of kind of how it affected this, this person, this band, this artist. And it's just kind of, I've just been kind of in the middle of like, well, fuck now I'm even further away from even <laughs> trying to understand it. But yeah, I just, I just wanted your opinion on it, man, because I admire so many people that I know you admire as well. And we've seen how it's affected, you know, our, our friends, the people that we admire and, and the community that we look up to. And it's not like, you know, the world of, you know, Foo Fighters and like crazy or big bands. It's just like, holy shit, man. Like this is, this is, this is that. And I don't know. I just wanted to be able to give you a time to, to, to express on that and also, you know, to be sad or to be pissed off or, you know, to be whatever you need to be. For <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a time. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. 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 No, I appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah. Sad and sad and pissed off is a, is a, uh, <laughs> those are two, yeah, those are two feelings that I feel, uh, kind of at home in, in, re with, re in re, you know, with, with regards to some of the music reality stuff for sure. Yeah. It's tough. And you you're you're located in Durham, right? Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. it, it would be really cool, and this can also be edited out, whatever. But it'd be super fucking cool that maybe we can maybe get together sometime, and I can put something together here for you guys for setting or for you or for whatever, and get Joey down off the mountain and put some weird cool shit together here in Cookville and. Just oh, that'd be fun to do something hole into the sky. Yeah, that would be really cool, man. That would be fucking rad. I just saw Joey not long ago. Like, um, he's out there. He 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 struggled a I, lot. I saw with, him at the pilot light like a month ago or a couple months ago. Yeah, I really wanted to go out there. I, I totally missed that, but um, we should we should keep we should brainstorm that, man. Marinate that. Maybe that can be a you know coming into twenty twenty five or or something. Um. That'd be really cool, man. We can all obviously not only 
you know, hear the music, but meet each other and just kind of, you know, collide all those lines of, you know, Yeah, man. Flex. things I like you to listen flex. to. <laughs> well, cool, man. I, I really appreciate you, you know, like I said in the beginning, rolling with the punches and it's just me. I do all of this. So sometimes I'm just like, fuck, this thing is a band, an orchestra, a this and a that. And, you know, <laughs> and then you got life just like barking at you all around. But I, I appreciate you taking, taking the time and also still just wanting to do this, you know, with, with some of the setbacks that we've had, man, it's, it, it's been an honor, man, speaking with you and yeah, Thanks, man. this is sweetie. I'm really glad you took the time to to listen to the music and think about it and just feel it. And um, I'm glad it's connecting. It's really humbling. It's really humbling to to hear all that. Truly, like I, uh, in in a lot of ways, making, especially making records, is a way for me to relate to myself. Yeah, yeah. Like so, when it. And to try and to try and have it relate to myself and also to have it relate to, again, like what I think of is this kind of like folk tradition of like albums, you know, like like these post these postcards, these little things that constant, you know, stars and this all these constellations that are sort of speaking back and forth to each other, you know, like all, all that is. what helps me uh or not helps me but it's it's what drives me to do it <laughs> and then so then when it connects with listeners um it, it that's like another connection that feels really nice so yeah Absolutely. thank you Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I'm excited for the record to come out Friday. I'm excited for people to hear it. Um, I, I've been recently, well, a year next month been working at a really, some good friends of mine have started a, a natural bakery and just, you know, really good, clean stuff. And we started a grocery store and hopefully that's where we would get to play or working on a little side venue, but, um, just planting seeds everywhere. But, um, Of course, I do play your 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 solo records very often in the store. I've got a little, you know, sweet playlist for the store. A lot of a lot of instrumental music. Um, but we're doing like a little, a little town art show on Friday night, and I think playing at Eulogy would be a good literal setting for this. So I'm hoping to blow some people's minds. <laughs> it's Friday with, with the record, so I'm excited about that. Nice. Well, awesome, Nathan. I man, I really appreciate this, man. It it's been an honor speaking with you, buddy. I Of course, of course, yeah. happy to make the time.